Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to go over another blog post and do a video about it. This is similar to what I did about the uh, the NBA post I made on my blog about the top 10 greatest players of all time in each position. This one, this time I'm going to talk about the top 15 greatest offensive players and top 15 greatest defensive players in NBA history. So I'm going to focus on the top 15 greatest scorers, basically. Uh, and top 15 greatest defenders um, and I'll give you guys my reasoning of why I think each player is uh, ranked the way they are and uh, here we go alright so uh, the, re the criteria I'm using to rank this is for scorers I'm focusing on the uh, number of seasons they had scoring over 25 points a game because I chose 25 kind of arbitrarily because I think that scoring 25 points a game is not that easy to do and only a you know, a lot of NBA superstars can do it. So scoring 25 points a game multiple times means that you're a really good offensive player, I think. Uh, I, you're a really good scorer, basically. Um, and I'm not taking into account shooting efficiency, so I'm not going to say, oh, Steph Curry, for example, might be really high on this list if this was a list about shooters. And Larry Bird might be higher on this list if it's a list about shooters, but it's a list about scorers. So that means uh, if you're a volume shooter or whatever, then you're going to be ranked pretty highly here because you can take a lot of shots and um, make a lot of points. Um, we're going to look at the number of scoring titles, which also uh, determines you know, how great a scorer you are um, in your era. Um, the best season scoring average, which is basically how much can you score in your prime, and I'm using this to determine the greatest offensive scores. And then to look at the top defensive players in NBA history, I'm using the number of seasons with more than three blocks and three steals a game, otherwise known as stocks, um, blocks plus steals. Um, because getting three blocks and steals a game is actually pretty difficult, and only very elite defenders can get that. Uh, number of Defensive Player of the Year awards, um, and this, yeah, obviously some of this criteria is going to be kind of um, biased against older players who didn't have blocks or steals and def Defensive Player of the Year awards. I know that, so I'm going to take that into account as well. Um, for the older players, I'm just going to be basing on what contemporaries said about how they played and some uh, archival footage as well. Um, number of defensive team, first team selections also taken into account. And uh, here we go. Yeah, so number one greatest offensive player of all time. Uh, you guys probably already know this. It's Michael Jordan. And uh, it's <laughs> yeah, everyone already pretty much knows this, so I don't feel bad about putting Michael Jordan number one. He's clearly... One of he's clearly one of the greatest scorers, if not the greatest scorer of all time. Uh, he has 12, 12 seasons scoring 25 points or greater. That's 80% uh, of his career. 33 points per game in the playoffs, which is the best playoff scoring average of all time. Uh, and 10 scoring titles, that's also the most all time. And the best season scoring average, which means um, how much did Jordan score in his prime? 37 points a game back in 1987. So there you go. Um, <laughs> he's the only one, I think, that can score, uh, I think he's the only one besides Will Chamberlain that scored 37 or more a game. So, yeah, it's Michael Jordan number one, uh, clearly the greatest. And number two, Will Chamberlain. Um, I know some people might think Will Chamberlain actually above Michael Jordan because his peak was actually greater. Um, but I put him at number two anyways. Um, he only has seven scoring titles, not as many as Jordan, but his best season scoring average is just incredible. 50 points a game, which will never ever be matched by anyone. Um, he scored 100 points a game before, so that's that's clearly a single game scoring record that will probably never be broken. Um, a lot of games, a lot of teams these, these days don't even score 100 points, so one guy scoring 100 points probably not going to happen. Uh, 70, yeah, so nine seasons, basically 70% of his career he scored over 25 points per game. Again, not as great as Jordan. Jordan, 80% of his career he scored over 25 points per game. But uh, still, I put a number two, Will Chamberlain, great offensive player. All right, number three, I have Kobe Bryant, uh, the Black Mamba. All right, the uh, the player that's next closest to Jordan in terms of style, and uh, problem number three. His, uh, he only has two scoring titles. You know, obviously he's not Jordan. He's not as great as Jordan or Wilt. But uh, he has 12 seasons, scoring scoring uh, more than 25 points. Um, he his best season was 35 points a game back in 2006. Also the same season he scored 81 points in a game. So that's the second best all time. Uh, Kobe Bryant at number three. And um, number four, I have Jerry West, the third best shooting guard of all time. 11 seasons, he scored 25 points or greater. That's a whopping 78% of his career. 
Uh, he was also a great assister as well, so he was pretty versatile. Um, peak scoring average, 31 points a game back in 1966. Uh, I think he also has a playoff scoring record for uh, 44 points a game, but only one scoring title because I think Wilt was just dominant back then. All right, but anyways, Jerry West, number four, great scorer. Allen Iverson, number five. Uh, some people might be surprised to see Allen Iverson here. Um, the reason I put Allen Iverson here is several reasons. First of all, 11 seasons, he scored 25 points or greater. Um, best season scoring average is 33 points a game, which is quite good. Uh, four scoring titles, that's the, uh, I believe, the third most all time, which is tied with Gervin and Durant. And um, he has the second highest playoff scoring average of all time at 30 points per game. Uh, Jordan has number one, obviously, and uh, Iverson actually has number two. So that's pretty good, and just which is especially like surprising considering how small he was. He was he was like less than six feet, and <laughs> to be able to score like as much as he, he did was is incredible. All right, so Allen Iverson number five. I have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar number six, and um, some people might think this is a bit low because Kareem is the NBA's all-time leading scorer. But I'm kind of counting it based on about uh, based on overall. I'm not looking at like. Oh, who is the all-time greatest NBA, or like, who scored the most points? Because you can obviously just go to the NBA website and find that out, right? It's Kareem number one, Karl Malone number two, and uh, Kobe number three. You know, that's very easy to find out, but I'm looking at overall what, I, I'm looking at your peak, I'm looking at um, your dominance, I'm looking at overall, it's not just about who, who, who just has the most points, because that's biased to who has the longest career, and Kareem had a, quite a long career, played 20 seasons. Um, yeah, Kareem uh, had 10 seasons, scored over 25 points a game, two scoring titles, 35 points a game. He scored back in 1972, which was his peak output, and that's, that's you know, obviously really good. And he has the most unstoppable move ever in the skyhook. Um, so he's, yeah, really good scorer. So I put him number six. Um, he is, I believe, the first center, no, the second center here. Will is the best scorer, I think, uh, in terms of the big men of Kareem second. Just below Will. Okay. Four spots below Will. Okay, I have below Kareem, Karl Malone, which is the second leading scorer in NBA history, right below Kareem. Uh, Karl Malone doesn't have any scoring titles, but that's because of Jordan. Um, he is actually a really good scorer. Uh, his best season scoring average is 31, which, um, you know, it's not really that that high, but if you look at how often he scored, like, like more than 25 points a game, he did it 12 seasons. Uh, 12 seasons he scored 25 points or greater, so... That's pretty impressive. Um, anyways, Karl Malone is a great scorer, so uh, probably the best power forward, uh, scoring power forward, I guess. Dirk Nowitzki would probably be up here as well, but he's still not as dominant as Karl Malone. So, yeah, Karl Malone number seven. All right, Dominique Wilkins. I have him as the top scoring uh, small forward of all time uh, because... Uh, he was in the era of the 1980s where there was a lot of scoring small forwards like Adrian Dantley, Alex English, Bernard King, uh, a lot of scoring SFs, Mark Aguirre. You know, they all scored a lot of points, but Dominique Wilkins scored more than all of them in his career. He 69% of his career, he scored over 25 points per game. And um, his best average is 30 points per game, which is not that impressive, but considering how long he did it, how consistent he was back in the, the 80s and 90s for scoring. That's why I have him up here. 11 seasons, you know, he scored over 25 points a game. So Dominique Wilkins, and you'll see several, several other small forwards, which could potentially be better than Wilkins, but I'm looking at the entire career so far, and so far Wilkins is up here because of his entire career output. All right, number nine, George Gervin. You're going to see a lot of shooting guards on this list because it's about scoring. Uh, George Gervin, you know, one of the best shooting guards ever. Uh, four scoring titles, which is tied for uh, third best all time. Eight seasons scoring 25 points or greater. Best season scoring average, 33 points back in 1980. And um, yeah, that's it. George Gervin is one of the greatest shooting guards ever. The Iceman with the finger roll. All right, LeBron James. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Eventually, LeBron James, I think, could be the best. Uh, LeBron James, or the guy after this, could be um, one of the, the best scoring scoring small forward of all time because 
people might not think of LeBron James as a scorer, but he's his career average is 27 points per game. He scored over 25 points per game over 92% of his career. So 12 seasons out of the 13 seasons he's played, he scored over 25 points a game. So he's actually a really good scorer. Um, his best season scoring average 31 points back in 2006. But people just don't notice that LeBron is, is a great scorer because he's such a great like athlete in other ways. Because he does, a, he is a great rebounder. He's a great assister. He just does everything so well that people don't think of him as just a scorer. Um, but he is a really good scorer. Like he averages 27 points per game. That's incredible. So LeBron James. Okay, so Kevin Durant is right after LeBron James at number 11, and um, Durant or LeBron James, I think, could possibly end up being the best sh uh, shooting or shooting or scoring small forward ever. Um, well, I think, obviously, Durant is a better shooter than LeBron is. LeBron gets most of his points from dunks and layups, uh, and Durant gets um, Durant is much better from range. He's a much better shooter than LeBron is. Um, but who's actually going to end up being the better scoring small forward? Who knows? But I know that Durant is roughly equal with uh, LeBron at this point. Um, he has 88% of his career he scored over 25 points per game. Uh, four scoring titles, so he definitely has more scoring titles and a better peak output than LeBron. Um, he's tied for number three, third most scoring titles all time, 32 points per game uh, at his peak. So I think at his peak, Durant is definitely a better scorer than LeBron, but LeBron is more consistent, so I have LeBron a little bit higher. Um, well, Durant could, you know, surpass him later in, later in his career, who knows, but right now I think it's, it's very close. LeBron or Durant, who is the better scorer? They're both really good scorers. They just score differently. LeBron's a really good dunker and and um, scores within the paint. Uh, Durant more of a range shooter, but could also be dunk. He could also dunk as well. So we'll see. Anyways, number twelve, Elgin Baylor. Okay, so I have a bunch of sm small forwards coming in this spot. Elgin Baylor, number twelve. Um, he doesn't have any scoring titles because of Wilt Chamberlain, but uh, he does have the third highest career scoring average all time, 27.4 points per game. And uh, his peak is just ridiculous. Uh, he averaged 38 points a game back in 1962, and that's 38 points a game. Uh, oh wait, did I say that Michael Jordan and Wilt Chamberlain had 37 points per game? No, I, I lied because Elgin Baylor, actually <laughs> Elgin Baylor actually averaged more points than MJ's peak output. So yeah, Elgin Baylor actually... Uh, yeah, 38 points per game. That's, I think it's the second boat, second best all-time after uh, Wilt Chamberlain. So yeah, eight seasons, uh, more than 25 points per game. He scored over 71 points in a game before. This was back in the 60s when there was no three-point line. And his uh, 61 points in a finals game is still a record that stands today. And uh, yeah, people don't think of Elgin Baylor that much because he played way back when, and then he got injured, and then he didn't win a ring. But uh, this guy, when he was in his prime, when he was healthy, he was just incredible. Like, 30, yeah, he was just one of uh, the most lethal scorers back uh, back in the day. So that was Elgin Baylor, number 12. All right, Oscar Robertson, number 13. Um, people, again, just like LeBron James, people don't think of Oscar Robertson as a scorer, but because he does everything, he can rebound, he can assist, he can score, and he has scored a lot. Uh, nine seasons of over 25 points or greater. Um, and 31 points per game at his peak, so he's definitely a pretty good scorer as well. Um, yeah, basically, what else can I say? It's the big O. Uh, he's basically the, the LeBron of his day. Uh, good scorer, good do-everything kind of guy. All right, number 14, uh, Rick Barry. Rick Barry, again, uh, I think not many people think about him as uh, one of the top you know, offensive players of all time, but Rick Barry is definitely up there. He was one of the most lethal scorers back in his day, uh, again, similar to Elgin Baylor, in his prime, in his prime, like Elgin Baylor and Rick Barry, I think they are they might be better than Kevin Durant and LeBron James, because if you look at their peak, um, Elgin Baylor with 38 points a game, Rick Barry with 36 points a game, almost 36 points a game back in just his second season, uh, is, is incredible, and uh, this guy averaged 40 points a game in the finals that year, um, just one scoring title, but you know he's, he he uh, went to the ABA as well, so he kind of um, wasted kind of his his prime there. Um, but yeah, Rick Barry is an incredible scorer, and uh, he actually has one of the highest playoff scoring averages ever at 27 points per game. So he substantially raises his game he's in the playoff. So that's pretty good. Rick Barry number 14. Lastly, I have Bob Pettit. Uh, Bob Pettit has seven. Scoring season scoring 25 points or greater, two scoring titles, and the best season scoring average is uh, 31 points a game back in 62. And uh, people don't think of Bob Pettit 
a lot either, but he was he was probably like the second best uh, scorer and rebounder back in the day uh, after Wilt Chamberlain. And uh, 58% of his career, like he averaged 25 points per game. He never averaged under 20 points per game in his whole career. He actually averaged 26 points per game in his whole career. Uh, and, you know, two scoring titles, two MVPs. So, yeah, Do- definitely Bob Pettit, pretty underrated guy, but uh, really, really awesome scorer as well. Okay. All right, we're done with the offensive players now. Let's move on with the defensive players. All right, top 15 greatest defensive players of all time. No surprise, number one, I have Bill Russell. Uh, Bill Russell, I have the listed the number of seasons with three steel stocks. It's basically uh, steals plus blocks, so that's what that means. Um, steals and blocks weren't recorded back in his day, so that's NA. Uh, DPOY, Defensive Player of the Year, again NA. They wasn't they wasn't awarded back in the day, and uh, one one alt defensive first team selection because they didn't start doing that until 1969, which was the year he retired. So that's why he only has one. But yeah, he, uh, according to what many people say, according to the uh, video footage, the archive footage, Bill Russell is the greatest defensive player of all time. Uh, there's several games he blocked more than 10 shots, more than 20 shots a game, who knows. Um, he blocked a lot of shots, and he would be the NBA's all-time leading uh, shot blocker if they were tracked back in his day. So uh, yeah, many people acknowledge him as the greatest defensive player ever, and you can easily see that from the archive footage. He just starts fast breaks from blocking and stuff it's just incredible so no one had more defensive impact than he did because he won 11 championships being the defensive anchor of the Celtics all right number one Bill Russell number two uh Will Chamberlain Will Chamberlain is one of the greatest all-around players of all time along with Michael Jordan uh he's had number two uh number two greatest offensive player and number two greatest defensive player of all time just it shows you how versatile this guy is He's the NBA's all-time rebounding leader. Also, the uh, yeah. Also, he's just amazing defensive player as well, not just an offensive player. You know, just like Russell, if blocks and steals were tracked back in the day, uh, he would just he would probably be number two all time. Um, you can see some games he blocked 20 shots, some games he blocked 10 shots. Um, yeah, he just incredible defensive presence as well. Not quite as good as Russell, but um, he's just up there with Russell. So. Yeah, Wilt Chamberlain, a uh, great player all around. Great offensive and defensive. And two defensive first team selections because that didn't happen again until 1969. So there we go. And uh, he didn't have the rest of the stuff. All right, number three, I have Hakeem Olajuwon. So here we go into the modern era where we do have blocks and steals and defensive player of the year. And Hakeem is undoubtedly the best defensive player of the modern era. He has... Um, 15 seasons, a whopping 15 seasons with over three steals and blocks a game, which is uh, just incredible. Uh, and by the way, stocks means steals plus blocks. So this means that he has over three steals or three blocks or three steals and blocks combined a game. He had 15 seasons almost his entire career uh, out of his 18 season career and two defensive player of the year titles, five time all defensive first team and the all time leader in block shots. So there we go. Hakeem is number three. Um, and I don't think really you can debate that. <laughs> when you're the all-time leader in block shots, you know, you're the best player in the modern era. So, there we go. Dikembe Mutombo is next, number four. Uh, he's tied for the most number of de- defensive player of the year awards at four, along with uh, Ben Wallace. But, uh, yeah, 11 seasons in his career, he had over three steals of blocks a game, second all-time block shots, and uh, three-time all-defensive first-team selection. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem that great, but if you look at the number of defensive player of your titles, the number of times he blocked, you know, three or four shots a game, then it adds up. So, to Canberra, I think, is number four, the second greatest shot blocker uh, defender of the modern era. All right, moving on to number five, I have Ben Wallace, the uh, other guy with four defensive player of the year awards. Um, ben Wallace is one of the greatest defenders of all time as well. And he's, he's kind of underrated. I think not a lot of people appreciate him because he wasn't a good offensive player. But as a defensive player, he was one of the greatest of all time, top five in my opinion. Nine seasons, he had over three steals of blocks a game. Four defensive player of the year titles, you know, tied for number one all time, or uh, most all time. And uh, five all defensive first team selections. Uh, and he's basically the reason why the Pistons were a powerhouse back in the mid-2000s. All right. So ben Wallace, number five. Next, next, I have Michael Jordan, who is, the, my opinion, the best um, defensive guard of all time. And 
Michael Jordan is one of the greatest uh, all-around two-way players in NBA history, along with Wilt Chamberlain and Hakeem Olajuwon. Um, not only is he the number one best defensive player of all time, he's a top 10 defensive player as well. Nine-time all-defensive first team and nine seasons with over three steals or blocks a game, plus a defensive player of the year award as a guard, and that's he's one of the only ones uh, to have that title as a guard. So incredible Michael Jordan at number six. Moving on, I have David Robinson at number seven. Uh, David Robinson, I think of him as kind of a lesser version of Hakeem, and that's not to say any disrespect to David Robinson because he is a great player. Um, I think he is, yeah, he's, he's just as good as Hakeem in a lot of ways, but not quite as good, uh, I think, on, uh, on the defensive aspect. He's, he's really good, though, but he, he's like 90% Hakeem, basically. So he has 11 seasons with over three steals or blocks a game. One defensive player of the year and four uh, first team selections. So um, in general, if you look at his stats, they're basically like 90% of what Hakeem's was, which is still really, really good. Okay. Uh, so next I have number eight, Tim Duncan, right below Robinson. Uh, he doesn't have a defensive player of the year, but he does have 10 seasons with over three steals or blocks a game and eight all defensive first team selections. Um, and he doesn't really need defensive player of the year to prove how great defensively he was. The thing that really amazes me about Tim Duncan is that is that he plays at such a high level even um, even when he's in like 36, 37 years old. And I was looking up these stats, and uh, for one of those seasons with over three stocks a game, steals and blocks, he was 36 years old, which is crazy. I don't think anyone else on this list has um, a season with three steals or blocks in a game and uh, be over 35 years old. Like. That's incredible, and like Tim Duncan still playing at a high level, is um, just a testament to how consistent, how consistently great he is. Okay, after Tim Duncan, I have Kevin Garnett, who many people might consider better than Tim Duncan defensively, but I have him about equal. Uh, Kevin Garnett, six seasons with three steals a blocks game, nine time All Defense First Team, and one Defensive Player of the Year. Um, I have him below Duncan because he was isn't quite as consistent as Duncan in his old age, so he isn't um, consistently great as Duncan, but in his prime, I think he was a better defender. Um, and yeah, definitely have him up here. He's one of the best uh, defensive power forwards ever. So uh, yeah, have him up here, I think. Who's, yeah, I think he is one of the top two defensive power forwards. I think Duncan and Garnett have it. All right, number nine. Number 10, I have Dennis Rodman. Uh, Pippen or Rodman, I was debating about which one was actually a better defender uh, overall. Um, if you look at Dennis Rodman, oh, he doesn't have any seasons with over three steals or blocks, but it's basically his hustle, the way he's able to impact the game uh, with his uh, defensive intangibles, basically. That's how he still has seven, uh, seven first-team selections, all defensive. Um, even though he doesn't have um, a lot of great blocks or steals, he can really impact the game still in a, a variety of ways, just by locking down the, the opposing team's best scorer or whatever. Like, he can defend any position, and he's just so versatile, just like Pippen, he can defend any position, and um, he has two-time Defense Player of the Year award, which made, him, made me put Rodman over Pippen, just because he has uh, those two titles and uh, Pippen does not. Yep, so number 11, Scotty Pippen, I have below Rodman because he doesn't have any Defensive Player of the Year awards, um, but he does have six seasons with over three steals or blocks a game, which is quite impressive. Uh, Eight-time All-Defensive First Team, and just like Rodman, he can defend any position, so um, Pippen and Rodman, you know, they're just all-around very versatile defender. defenders, can um, basically go anywhere, so... All right, and after Rodman and Pippen, I have Mark Eaton at number 12. Uh, some people forget about this guy, but when Mark Eaton was in the league, he was one of the best defensive players ever. Uh, I do think he's still one of the best defensive centers ever. Uh, just like Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo, he didn't have a lot of offense, his scoring capabilities were limited, but um, to make up with it for that, his defensive prowess was incredible. Like He led the league in blocks four times, uh, seven seasons he had for with over three steals and or blocks a game, uh, two defensive player of the year titles, and three all defensive first team selections. So. Um, yeah, you can't discredit Mark Eaton for that. He is uh, top, I think he's top five, right? Top five all time in blocks or something like that. Or t definitely top 10 or top five all time in blocks. Anyways, he's up there. Um, so Mark Eaton definitely deserves to be in top 15, I think, all time great defensive players. 
So that's Smoky. Number 13, I got Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I think Kareem is a little bit underappreciated in the defensive aspect of the game. A lot of people just think of him as an offensive guy, but just like Wilt Chamberlain and Hakeem Olajuwon, um, he's a great two way player, a great two way center. 10 times he had over. Uh, ten, 10 seasons, he had over uh, 3 steals or blocks a game, which is really incredible when you consider that blocks and steals weren't tracked for the first 4 seasons of his career. Um, and he has 5 all-defensive first-team selections, which is still pretty impressive. So I think Kareem was a great all-around player. Um, he's not at the same level Hakeem or Will is when you talk about uh, defensively, um, or like all-around defensively and offensively, but... Um, He's still up there. I would say he's about as good as David Robinson defensively, even though I have ranked him much lower than David Robinson. He's about um, similar to David Robinson defensively and much better than David Robinson offensively, uh, since he has a sky hook and, you know, being the all-time leading scorer and everything. So, um, yeah, and all in all, Kareem's a great great center, great player, um, but just a step below Hakeem or Will on this list. And uh, below David Robinson, I have him uh, as well, just because... Um, yeah, no defensive player of the year, and he led the league in blocks twice, but um, I think that's that's really the only thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I would actually put maybe put him above later. I'm still thinking about it. He's David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. Yeah, yeah, he's not that far off. So yeah, I think I could rank Kareem a little bit higher. I'm still thinking about that, but he's, he's again, about similar to David Robinson defensively, I would say. All right. Number four, I got uh, Dwight Howard. So uh, Dwight Howard, I think, also pretty uh, underrated in um, what he brings to the game these days. Uh, a lot of people don't like him now, but uh, back when he was in his prime, when he was with Orlando, he was just a beast defensively, and he got three Defensive Player of the Year awards. I just have to have him in my top 15. Uh, when you have three Defensive Player of the Year awards, that's the second most all-time. Um, he is five-time leader in rebounds, two-time leader in blocks. Six seasons with over three steals of blocks a game, um, and four-time all-defensive first team. So you can't just ignore those things, you know. Uh, I think that Dwight Howard is great defensive presence, um, and I have him top 15. And a lot of people might give me some flack for this, but yeah, he's up here. So deal with it. <laughs> All right, number 15, I got Walt Frazier. Uh, lastly, I was thinking about for the last spot whether to put Walt Frazier or Gary Payton. I think both of them are really, really good defensive guards. Um, but which one was better is really hard to pick. So I, this is pretty much a tie, okay? I'm not saying Walt Frazier is, is uh, that much better or anything. Uh, I had to pick between Walt Frazier and Gary Payton, who was the better defensive guard. Um, I know that Gary Payton has a defensive player of the year, but Walt Frazier didn't have that luxury because uh, DPOYs weren't given back in his time. And um, Gary Payton has nine all-defensive first team, Walt Frazier has seven, but Walt Frazier, again... Um, Back in his first early days, there weren't any defensive, all defensive teams, and uh, steals and blocks weren't really tracked during his uh, first few seasons when he was in his prime. So, I think if uh, steals and blocks were tracked during the first years of his career, he would definitely have a lot more than uh, than Gary Payton. So that's why I have him above here. So yeah, uh, it's a little bit misleading to say he has only one season because uh, steals and blocks weren't tracked when he was in his prime. But um, he is one of the best defenders in the guard position. And seven all-defensive first teams just uh, back set up, basically. And, um, yeah, a lot of people, if you look at footage of Walt Frazier, he was definitely one of the best defensive guards uh, back in his day and in all time, basically. I think him, Jordan, and Peyton are probably the best defensive guards ever. And I just want to do some uh, honorable mentions. I mean, this is my top 15 uh, all-time greatest defenders and um, greatest scorers, according to me. Uh, I done my analytics, I just um, picked out some arbitrary uh, stats and stuff to back myself up, but if you guys don't uh, like it, if you guys don't disagree with it, I mean if you guys disagree with it uh, or agree with it, then uh, please leave a comment or let me know. I also have some honorable mentions here I can talk about, um, just so that you guys know I don't leave these guys out, I, I'm aware that there is a lot of players that I missed, and if you guys do have uh, some players that you think I missed or uh, didn't talk about, then let me know as well. Um, offensively, I have Adrian Dantley, Alex English, Shaq, Carmelo Anthony, Bob McAdoo. I think these are would, these would be my, my next five. And uh, some other people as well, probably Tracy McGrady, uh, Bernard King, Pete Maravich. There's a lot of good offensive players in NBA history. Um, can't put them all there. Uh, defensively, I have Gary Payton, obviously, which I who I talked about, really. I was really thinking about putting him in the, that, that last spot. Uh, Lonzo Mourning, who I was also thinking about putting in there as well. 
uh, Cindy Moncrief, Bobby Jones, and Dennis Johnson, and there are also a lot of other great defensive players I probably have missed as well. Uh, probably the all-time like steals, like John Stockton, um, uh, Jason Kidd, uh, Chris Paul, a lot of good people up there. Al- Alvin Robertson, you know, who, uh, who was actually defensive player of the year before. Um, and then a lot of good like blockers who I missed probably as well. So, so yeah, if you guys um, have any comments about who I missed and if you disagree or agree with my uh, ranking, then uh, let me know. Anyways, that's my top 15 all-time greatest offensive and defensive players uh, according to my opinion. That's it. Thanks for watching.